Good morning again. Welcome to this service uh, before the Lord. We are uh, here because of our Lord. And uh, I trust you've had a great week. Um, maybe you've had some challenges as well. And we can bring them to the Lord as always. And uh, this is a, a special weekend. We want to recognize Memorial uh, Weekend. And I'm sure that some of you or many of you are uh, thinking about your loved ones and um, honoring them in some way. And uh, we can trust God that he has a plan and a purpose for us to, to, to live and to go forward in the things of God. And there's many things the Lord has done for us already that we could um, just uh, be here a long time and, and talking about all the good things. God is good. He's for us today. I want to invite you to sing in your homes or where you're at. Or maybe you're um, by yourself. Maybe you're with the family. But... Uh, don't be afraid to sing or hum or do something. Make a joyful noise to the Lord today. Let's sing, To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atoned it for sin. And opened the life that all may go in praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he hath done oh perfect redemption the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from jesus a pardon receives praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, to Jesus the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. So, Lord, we give you the glory, we give you our hearts, we give you praise. We choose to fix our eyes upon you. We choose, Lord, to dwell in your presence, to come together as one, Lord, across our community. I lift up this church family in the name of Jesus that your presence, your promises would be unfolded. Lord, your wisdom, your protection, your guidance will be upon us as a church that you will lead us in these kinds of days that we're living, that we can have a message, that we can have a purpose, that we belong to one another and through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. We're glad you could join us today. Uh, we have some announcements. And um, the first announcement I would like to give you is that we are working on checking to see what we will be doing in the next week. We know that there's some guidelines out there, such as 25% capacity. So our church leaders and our state leaders are both week, uh, meeting this week. And so stay tuned on our website, and um, we'll be letting you know. But I'm going to give you a couple reasons to fill out the Connect card. It's uh, crosslightchristian.com backslash connect. And so you can go there if you have a prayer request. Do you have any prayer requests at all, something that you'd like to pray for? For you, for your family, for something nationally, whatever it would be, you can go to crosslightchristian.com backslash connect and put in your prayer request. 
Also, if you would like to attend church live, or if you know that you're going to be attending church by watching online, which we encourage people that uh, would be more um, compromised with their immune to do that, uh, can you please go to crosslightchristian.com and connect, backslash connect, and let us know what you would like to do. Would you like to come live? Would you like to watch at home? And also, it would be really fun to hear from people where are you watching from. So if you want to go there and let us know where you're watching from, you know, we have people in other states, that would be a, um, a great thing to do. I know they're going to be making a lot of decisions this week as far as camp goes, so uh, let's be praying for those decisions. And we are having our Wednesday night Bible study by Zoom, and that would be another great reason to go to uh, fill out the Connect, if you would like the Bible study link by Zoom to let us know that. Uh, we want to thank God for helping us in so many ways. This last week, we had a great baccalaureate at the school. There were um, quite a few students and families that were able to come. We were able to get donations so the students could get Bibles. We want to make a difference. And if you need a Bible, you let us know, because we would like to help you out with that, too. So with that, we'll pass it back to Pastor Gary. Thank you, Carrie. Good idea to go and connect with us uh, on the link and uh, just really maybe uh, let us know your thoughts um, and any prayer requests, of course, I, I'd like to know and be able to pray for them. Um, so thank you again for uh, partnering with us as we are uh, together to support uh, the local church. If you can uh, know that all that you give go toward the work of the ministry here and thank you for your support if you want to give you're thinking about uh, how to do that you can go on the link and find us crosslakechristian.com or just simply send it to p.o box 635 it works the old-fashioned way and uh, it still gets the job done so appreciate so much all your blessing god is good and if you were here you would say all the time god is good and God is for us. He's not against us. We're going to be sharing from the book of Romans in a, in a bit, uh, the 12th chapter. If you'd like to have a Bible and follow along a little bit and later on and through the, as we begin to look toward chapter 12. And I uh, just really want to zero in today on renewing our minds and uh, just fixing our hearts and minds in Christ. There's so many things that are happening, so many things to be uh, caught up with in our world. It just gets overwhelming. We just need a refreshing sometimes to just know that, you know, we're just going to clean the slate, clean our hearts and minds before the Lord and just empty ourselves and, and let him fill you. And so uh, that's what he loves to do, and that, I believe that's our secret to staying strong in, in these days that we're living. So let's sing. And the king of my heart, he is good. He's never going to let us down. And uh, may sometime you may feel like he let you down. And you know what? God sees a big picture. Let's believe God or whatever is happening that he's going to turn around. He's going to bring it. And he's going to give us favor. He's going to give us this healing. He's going to give to us that good word that we need to be encouraged. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good. my heart be the wind inside my sail the anchor in the waves oh is my song the king of my heart be the fire inside my vein the echo of my day oh is my song you are good good oh you are good good Oh, 
you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you are good good oh you are good good Let's just begin to think about that. Let's just begin to think and, and envision the goodness of our God, the greatness of our God, how he cares for his people, how he's a great shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. He is always looking out for us. He watches over us. He has you on his mind today. And I believe that God wants to draw near to you as you draw near to him. And he will always meet you. He's always looking for a heart in whom he can fill. He loves your, the hunger. He loves you, the thirst that you and I have for him. Let's just bring ourselves before him. Want to be close, close to your side. Heaven is real. Death is a lie. I want to hear voices angels above singing as one hallelujah holy holy god almighty great i am who is worthy none beside thee god almighty I want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world, hating the dark. I want to see dry bones living again, singing as one. For you, demon, run and flee at the mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell for any who can stand before the power. of angels above sing as one hallelujah holy holy god almighty 
great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, great I am. Yes, Lord, great is your name, great is your name, Lord. Nothing else can compare to you, Lord. Nothing else, Lord, can take your place. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You are living hope. I tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free my shame is undone your presence Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place, fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, what our heart longs for. We overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're a living hope. Your presence, dear Lord. I tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. For my heart become free, my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place, feel the atmosphere. Your Glory, God, is what our heart long for. Be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Present, Lord. Come here, come flood this place, fill the atmosphere. The glory, God, is what our heart long for. Be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. presence. We open our hearts to you, Lord. Fill our hearts, oh God. 
renew our hearts, O oh Lord. We pray for a fresh wind, O oh Lord, of the Holy Spirit today to blow into our hearts, to breathe into us, O oh God, a refreshing that would come from heaven above. Lord, let it blow into our homes, into our places where we are right now in the name of Jesus. That you, Lord, would bring joy, that you would bring hope, that you would bring wisdom and understanding and a complete peace that surpasses all our understanding. We commit to you our ways, Lord. We commit to you, Lord, all that we're going through, all that we're carrying. We lay it at your feet because we know only you can bear our burdens. Only you, Lord. Only you, Lord, are able to withstand all the weight, all the things, all the anxiety, all the things that are going on. We pray for our nation. We pray for our country. We pray for a president. We pray for those who are making decisions and hard things. We pray for favor among our land. We pray for, Lord, that you will heal our land. Begin to open up as you're doing. Begin to bring, bring Lord, this COVID virus, diminish it, dissolve it, Lord. Lord, may it be gone in the name of Jesus soon. And, Lord, the churches can meet again, that we can have the freedom to go out and do what you call us to do and be what you call us to be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad the Lord hasn't forgotten you? If I could hear you. I think some of you would say amen to that. It's always good to remind ourselves that God is all, always the one who knows best. At times like this that we live in and um, the things that we carry at times, the things that we are concerned about, sometimes we may become guilty of not bringing them before the Lord and not allowing the Lord to carry them as he wants to. And today, today I just turned to, to, to Romans chapter 12, and as I mentioned earlier, just thinking about how that we can, the word of the Lord is such an encouragement. It builds our faith. In fact, Romans says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. There's a lot of things in Romans that help us understand what grace and what justification and, and sanctification and being moved by the grace of God to do what we can do and be what we ought to be. But I want to mention that there are people that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. And my heart goes out to the families, to the loved ones who carry on. My heart goes out to people who have lost and paid the ultimate price for our freedom today. But we know that the Lord himself understands loss. The Lord himself understands pain. The Lord, more than anyone else, understands what it means to be rejected at times and not have the freedom and God, the Holy Spirit, is working in our behalf. I believe that he can change the hardest of hearts, that he can open the closest, the tightest doors, that he can, by his promises, by his spirit, that he can move mountains that is placed before us today. <laughs> Nothing is too difficult for him. Because of his power, his all-knowingness, his omniscience, meaning he is everywhere. He, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient, meaning he's all-knowing. He knows what you're thinking about even right now. He knows what, carry, what you're carrying inside your heart. He cares for your feelings. In fact, of the matter is, it's okay to be honest before the Lord. At a time when we don't feel strong, at a time when we just feel simply weak or worn out, oftentimes, as God said to Paul, who prayed for the thorn of his flesh, 
to be removed three times, he said, no, no, my grace is sufficient for you. In your weakness, And so Paul is the one who writes in another place in Corinthians. He's, he's content with, with afflictions. He's, he's, even in his times of testings, Apostle Paul was able to, to go forward and be in the will of God. So I want to take us to this wonderful portion of Scripture and review it. I'm sure many of you have already memorized this. And actually, when you hear it, you'll probably, oh, yeah, yeah, that verse. That's a good verse. So I urge you, Paul is writing, therefore, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed. To this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, and which that which is good and acceptable and perfect. There's a lot there. There's a lot there in those two verses. We're going to kind of, kind of zone back into verse one and zero in on this phrase by phrase. I urge you, therefore. No, when we ever we find a therefore in the in the sentence, we need to back up. What did he say therefore? But he was talking about the calling of God. He was talking about the re, the rejection of Israel that Israel rejected God. But God keeps reaching out to a stubborn and obstinate people. That God is still reaching out toward your family if you have family that you're concerned about today, God is concerned about them even more so. I love verse 29. This is just a little, just a little backdrop leading up to chapter 12. For the gifts of the, and the calling of God are irrevocable. In other words, when God calls people, he, he, his call remains on their life and he will win. He will bring them back in, his, in due time. What do we need? What do we need to do as we become a believer? What What is the first thing? What What needs to happen? Well, the first thing is we admit we need Him. One of the biggest needs uh, uh, in our hearts is to know that we recognize that we are a sinner. I I believe that this frees us up. It frees up the hand of God to move into our behalf and begin to remove the sins as far as the east is from the west. I mean, there's nothing that God cannot restore. There's nothing too hard that God cannot do. So part of this verse is we say, I urge you therefore, brethren, Paul is speaking out of experience. Paul is speaking out of it, perhaps his own life, that before he became a believer in Christ, that he was actually a persecutor of the church. So he's reminding the readers, you know what? I used to be on the other side, but God met me on the road. In the middle of my thinking, in the middle of what I thought was right, he came and he interrupted. But it was a good interruption. And so he said, I urge you by the mercies of God. It was by the mercy of God that Paul was turned around. But Saul was turned around and his thinking. And that's exactly what needs to happen in our lives is that we are changed in our hearts so that our thinking, that our thinking gets fixed. Our thinking patterns, our thinking how we operate often is what we think, how we think it begins to op begin to operate how what we're thinking on. Now I I I have a lot of respect for people who have paid the the ultimate price. They pre presented themselves before God's. Many people in our world have been martyrs for Christ. But Paul here is, I believe he's speaking toward. You as a living person, 
as a life that has been called out to live for him is one thing. We can say we'll die for Christ, but there's another side. I don't put the, the, that statement down because that, that, that's, that's a strong the commitment. But on the other side, we are called to live for him. And we will do as much with the help of the Lord to live for the Lord, to live for Christ, to lift up the name of Jesus. In every circumstance, I want to focus a bit on you as a person. It says to present your bodies. Some of you may feel like, well, you know what, I... I'm kind of getting up there. I don't have a lot left anymore. You know, we make, it, we make you know, we're, we're, just, we're just making it. We're just getting through. You, you know what? That's okay. You can only do as much with what God gives you. But if you give your breath to breathe, you have reason to have purpose in this life. As long as you have breath to breathe, that you are a person, you are a life that represents the goodness of God. What is it that God is looking for then? A holy sacrifice. Present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. How can we be holy? Except by the blood of the Lamb. He has made us holy. We are not holy by doing what is right. We are holy through Christ who makes us right. So therefore, we are able to do what is right. Does that make sense? That he changes our heart so that what we thought was right, what we thought was okay, it was not up to God's expectations. And so I want to focus, I want to encourage you that it's more important at, at the beginning of this walk to, to, to understand that God is concerned about your heart, your, your character, your, your, your being, that you are in right relationship with him, that you know him, that brings all the other aspects of our life into the place where it ought to be that we are not going to come, come out and try to pretend to be something we're not. We can do the work of the ministry and actually uh, almost seem like, well, we're doing the work of the ministry. We're, we're doing what God has called us to do, but it's our heart in it. And sometimes the body doesn't want to do what the mind wants to do. And let, let me just, you know, try to relate. Sometimes we got it in our heart. We want to do something, but the body rebels. But I have good news. The day is coming when the people of God are going to receive new bodies, where the people of God are going to be changed, that the people of God are going to be resurrected. And those who die in Christ, they have a new body awaiting. They are in the presence. Of, this is exactly what Paul was trying to describe in another place. He was talking to the Philippians about he was torn between living in this world, he says it this way, Paul's letter to Philippians 1, and 1, chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, for to me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I don't know which to choose. Almost like, did he have a choice? I know the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. We all, we all have our, you know, our appointment. But we don't have to be afraid of death with 
with Christ in our hearts because when death comes, we are, that's our door into the presence. But Paul was describing, if I live here, it's good. I, I can minister. I can help other people find Christ. Fruitful labor, but if I die, it's gain. In other words, he wins, we win. If we live, we win if we die. Victory, absolute triumph. And so you say, what does this mean? Present your body as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Now, I want to talk a little bit about our lifestyle. I want to talk, I want you to think about what is it that God really is asking of us? I believe it. sometimes we feel like we are not good enough. We're not worthy of doing anything that really pleases the Lord. What is it this what's what is the sacrifice that God is looking for? Your sacrifice is a willingness to admit your need. Your sacrifice oftentimes is your brokenness. Your sacrifice often is your pride that you bring. You humble yourself and you say, Lord, help me to be found faithful. To be faithful to the end. As Revelations declared they, to a group of people there, they were faithful. Be faithful, he admonished to be faithful till the end, and I will give you the crown of life. What is it that gets the attention of God? I know you can read the book of Revelation, and he admonished the churches there, seven churches. There were some things that they did right, but there was this one thing that seemingly come back to this they would lost especially, they've lost their heart for God. They lost, they become mechanical in their ministry. They, be, they become lukewarm. And what is God when he gets, when we get desperate for him, when we cry out to him, God respond because he knows your heart. God is not impressed by words, big fancy words. And so I believe there is hope for the lost. There is hope for the sinner. When he admits his need, he becomes holy because Jesus is holy, because his blood was perfect, sinless. He was pure, without spot, with no blemish at all. It was the only blood that could remove the sin that we talked about a bit ago, about as far as the east is from the west. He cleanses us. He makes us. He creates in us a new heart. He gives us a purpose. He gives us this understanding that we are not living for ourselves anymore or just to live to get up and to please ourselves, but we have been called by God to present ourselves before him and say, oh Lord, now what? Help me to hear what you're saying. Help me to listen and help me to follow. Help me to be obedient. And I want to talk a little bit about this next verse because there's a lot of things that are coming at us today through the media, through the, through the world, through the circumstances, maybe through, through communities that are struggling. And we have a choice to make. 
we have a choice to dwell on that which is only negative. I, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be uninformed. That's, that's good. We should know how to pray. But I believe that there, we need to take a break. We need to take a time out and get ourselves alone with God so we can hear what God is saying to you. What is God saying to you and I? You know the story, they put a frog in a frying pan and they started to heat it up slowly. That's a, just a cute little story. But it, it, it gives a fact, you know, a frying pan or a boiling water thing. And the frog didn't jump out because it didn't know it was getting hotter and he just kind of got used to it. He got conditioned. And maybe we be careful not to become conditioned. Comfortable and just being satisfied with having Jesus become conformed to this world. Don't be conformed. What, in other words, don't give in to the things. What the world is saying is truth. What the world is saying is the world has a different set of rules. The world is, is, guide, is gu guided. Is the worldliness comes from Satan himself. World, there is a system here in the world that Jesus allowed Satan to have a, a certain amount of rule and dominion. We must recognize his scheme. We must be careful to recognize what that is. That is not from God. Don't be conformed to this world. Jesus loved people. They hated sin. I'm not saying that we should shun people that are different. I believe that God has called us to love people but to stand for truth, not buckle under. Not buckle under the pressures of the world. That's why we need to pray for our Christian leaders. Paul Gazelka, one of my friends, who's standing strong with the help of the Lord. There's a huge battle that is taking place in the political arena, as you know. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, Gary needs to get away and spend time with God. I need to have a word from the Lord. I need to know what God is saying to me. What I ought to do at time is completely shut off all vices and get along with God. Find a place wherever that may be, and begin to unclog your mind. Begin to, the, the word uh, sift comes to mind. The word sift. Begin to sift down. You know what? This is what's truth. This is not truth. This is truth. This is, this is what God, this is God's will this is not gone. And this is exactly where this verse leads us to the next thought in this second verse, the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, well, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Many people struggle with the will of God. Is this the will of God? Does this happen? Was that the will of God? And I want to just encourage you, the will of God, first and number one, is that you might have a heart for him. And when you have a heart for him, he will help you with the details. He will guide you when you are trying to make decisions. And many times it's the barometer of the word peace or the, the, the sense that there's a peace God is not the author of confusion. I, I, I've been reading, I've been plowing through Leviticus because it's just, I started the Bible over here a few weeks ago, but, you know, you, it, it, you got to hang in there. I admit, I read a little faster, I skim a little bit, you know, sometimes it's like, this doesn't apply to, me so much, but all of a sudden there'll be something that'll stick out. And Moses would go before 
into the temple, into the tabernacle, and God would speak to him. It's, it's like, I wish God would speak to you and I audibly. Do you ever wish? God, would you just make it clear? Help me to, you know, what is different. We don't walk by sight. We don't have the pillar that they had in, in, the, in the nation of Israel had in, in the Old Testament. They had the pillar of fire and a cloud. And they would move out when that cloud would move and the fire would be over them at night to light their path. But that is the exact imagery of who God and what God is doing now for you and I as Jesus. And when I go away, I'm sending the Holy Spirit and he will be with you always. So for you and I today, we can hear the voice of God, though it may not be audible, but it be a sense, an urgency, a direction. Maybe it'll be one word. And it will flood you with joy and peace. And see, we go on in this chapter. Verse 3, wow, challenges me. For through the grace given to me, I say to every man among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. What does he say? We're not to compare ourselves to one another or think, well, I, I would never do that, or I would never, you know, you know, you know how we can sometimes go, well, well, well look, look at me, Lord, look what I've done. And God is saying to us, humble, humble, walk humbly before me. By the grace of God, he called us. By the grace of God, we've been saved. And I love this portion of the last verse of chapter 3. God has allotted to each a measure of faith. You and I may have different degrees of faith, and God works with your faith. And guess what? The scriptures teach us that even if we have the faith, the smallest as, as a mustard seed, we can say to that mountain, be moved, and it can be removed. Just because well, you, we hear this phrase, well, I wish I had more faith. You know, start with what you have, work with what you have, exercise the faith and how faith with, and how you do that is to pray and believe God and pray sometimes bigger prayers my wife has faith she can she helps people she believes in people she has faith that things can happen and she's worked with students over the years through her, her school teaching and encouraged students that they can step out and do it. That's the gift. It's one of her gifts. It's a gift of encouragement. You know, sometimes our faith needs to be encouraged. Sometimes our faith is tested. Sometimes our faith needs to be watered. Sometimes our faith needs to be, you know what? You've, you've pleased. God is pleased with faith, and it's exactly what Hebrews said. Without faith, we can't please him. So going back to the first part of this chapter, what does it mean to offer yourselves as a living holy son? You don't exactly know how it's all going to turn out, but you have this faith inside you that believes God. You know what? Because I'm a child of God, I believe I'm here for a purpose. I believe that God is working in my behalf. I believe that God hears my cry, he hears my prayer, and that he will guide me and even when I don't know how to pray the Holy Spirit prays through me where can where is there any else in this earth can we get anything like that 
a wonderful way to live. But see, because I live in this body, I have weaknesses. I have to battle through. I have to press through. Sometimes I have to speak to my own mind. I have to remind myself, guess what? You know what? I can get off track. I can get my eyes on, well, this could happen. Oh, well, that probably won't be reachable. You know, you begin to shrink back. And when God is saying, here, look to me. I'm right here. I'm calling you. My hand is upon you. You are going to, not in your own strength, not what you can do, but what I can do through you. And I take much of the scripture, literally always, as much as possible. And God is working all things together for good. Exactly what, in another place, God is able to work all things together for good. Another place in Romans that says that for those who love God and are called, you are his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10. God doesn't make, someone said God doesn't make junk. You are his workmanship. Oh, sometimes we want to let the enemy beat us up. And we just kind of allow it. You know, it's time to take back what the Lord says is ours. That he has given us a freedom today. And I'm thankful for the military. I'm thankful for people who, you know, I can't say enough about them. But the ultimate price and the ultimate freedom, the ultimate freedom is within our hearts today. Our ultimate freedom, our ultimate understanding, the ultimate life is understanding that Christ lives in me. And the life I live, I live by faith, as Paul described in Galatians. And so we're going to pray this prayer. That we're going to believe that God is going to see us through not only just see us through, but we're going to actually triumph. That we're going to have such victory that we're going to see the hand of God in our midst. That we're going to believe that the Lord is who he said he is and whatever things we're facing, whatever's combating, combating, and our battle often is in our mind, and we've got to take our mind under subjection with the help of the Lord. And I place my thoughts upon you. I fix my eyes upon you, Jesus. Right now, Lord, I want to pray for people across our fellowship are discouraged. Ultimately, that is not your plan. They're wondering when this is all going to end, when this is going to open up, when we're going to have the freedom to meet again. I know this, Lord. Though they destroy, as Paul said, though my body even is destroyed, to die is gain, whatever happens, Lord. It's a wonderful way to live. We surrender to you right now. We, will, we will pray your will, your will in America. We pray for churches across our community. We pray for the communities families or stressed out with financial troubles, setbacks. There are people that are wrestling with other health issues. There are people that are wrestling and struggling in relationships. Lord, we need a, re we need a refreshing. 
We need your revival of fire to flame up in our hearts. As Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gift of God. I pray that the coals of our heart would begin to burn and we would be alive, made alive in Christ. We're singing this little chorus as a way to conclude our service today. Lord, I come to you, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. Let's sing it together. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Your sin runs deep, your grace is more. When grace is found, is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I'm free. Holiness is Christ in me. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Oh, every hour I need you, I want defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Oh, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. I need you, I want defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. I'm going to pray a prayer, a simple prayer of inviting the Lord into our hearts, inviting the Lord. Uh, maybe you've prayed this prayer before. It's okay, I think, from time to time to just renew our relationship with Jesus, saying, Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I need you. Come into my heart. Just pray that prayer. Begin to think, inviting the Lord into your heart. He's there standing at the door, knocking. If any man opens the door, he will come in. Lord, we open our heart to you. Come into our life. Come into our hearts. Live in us. Live through us. Lord, we don't always have the answers, but you have all that we have need of. And so, Lord, I pray you will restore what's been broken, restore what is in need of healing. We pray that you, Lord, would be just there, that your presence would actually be all that we really need. We'd find you. You would find us, and you would find you. In the name of Jesus. And we commit circumstances all in the name of the Lord. It's in your hands. Help us, Lord, to just live by the grace of God, to live by the, 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 the wonderful presence that you have for us. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless everyone. Keep up the good work, keeping the faith. Be encouraged. You are loved. God is for you, not against you. See you next time. God bless.